Sometimes there's a mystery detectives cannot solve. Their problems only multiply, solutions just evolve. And then comes the great divide that splits things all apart. Then you need the master, a man with math and heart. He's Abacus the Great. He'll clear up all suspicion. He'll distribute, regroup, solve for X, cause he's a math magician. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. All things which he excels. Polygons, fractions, a man of many spells. The steps are simple, one by one, the numbers infinite. For help in math, both big and small, call Abacus the Great! Hello, hello. Is this thing on? Oh good, oh good. Hello apprentices, and welcome back. I, Abacus the Great, am going to be teaching you this week about variables, expressions, and equations. But before we get to any of that, remember last week's episode, we had another one of Abacus's favorite no's, where we had a guest teach us that 13 times 7 is 28. She did it both ways, multiplication and repeated addition, and got the same answer. Have you thought about that this week? Let's dive in, take a look at it, see if we figured out what the trick was. All right, pictured above me there is the magic trick that Mrs. Pratt showed us last week. 13 times 7 equals 28 or 13 added seven times equals 28. Were you able to figure out the trick? 13 multiply seven. She started off initially correct. Three times seven does equal 21. And she is correct that one times seven does equal seven, but what's important to remember is what place this number is in. Is the value of that number one? No, that one is in the tens place, so the value of that one is 10. So you actually need to think about it as 10 times seven equals 70 not seven. And then you could add them together. One add zero, and two add seven would be nine. The same issue is had when we started looking at the repeated addition. She was correct, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. But again, you have got to remember that all of these are not one, they are a one in the tens place. So the value of each of those is 10. So rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we need to say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, which when added together would get us the same answer when we multiplied, 91. Excellent trick, Mrs. Pratt. Hopefully you apprentices were able to figure that one out. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, as I said, this week, we are going to be learning about expressions and equations. My man Helix went the distance this week and came up with another amazing song. Let's take it to him. I have often dreamed of an expression where there was a number sentence waiting for me Except for two numbers One would be an X And a voice tells me It's a variable If I input a number I 
I just have to substitute and it's I do the opposite operation to solve for x. It might take some of my time, but I'll see this problem through. And it won't look back until I have solved the problem. I will show my work so I know represents a number expressions and equations I'm an expert at them now Do you ever get any of those mathematical dreams? Some of them good some of them probably nightmarish homework haunting you down the road well, hopefully, with the math and magic that we've been learning, you'll conquer those dreams in no time. Now, expressions and equations. Let's get to them. To understand expressions and equations, we need to understand first what those three vocabulary words I have listed there are. The first of them is expression. Now, an expression is any time that two numbers or more or a variable and a number or whatever are linked together by uh, an operation. There are three examples of expressions. Three add five is an expression because it has those two numbers linked together by the addition. Six subtract n. Now n is a variable, we'll get to that in just a minute. But six subtract n uh, is an expression because you have the two items linked together by an operation. Five t. Now five t is an expression because when we have a number right next to a variable, that's the same as saying five multiply t. Now notice I have a little dot there. That dot also means multiply. There's lots of different ways that we can show multiply. Uh, we learned when we were doing the distributive property that if we have the number right next to the parentheses, that's multiply. Here are two other ways besides your, your standard x to mean multiply. Now, the reason we don't use x for multiply is because we're getting to the point that those letters might be used to be, represent unknown numbers. Now, the difference between an expression and an equation is simply that an equation has an equal sign. You can help, you, you can help yourself remember that by noticing the EQUA in equation is also at the start of equal. So that equal sign is what makes an expression like 3 add 5 into an equation because you have 3 add 5 equals 8, or 6 subtract n equals 2, or 5 times t equals 30. Now I've mentioned variables already and I've kind of explained them. A variable is a letter that represents an unknown number. So here we have 6 take away n equals 2, or 5 multiply t equals 30. Let's start by working with our expression 6 take away n. Now one of the many ways that you'll see this is either an assigned value to n, so they might say evaluate the expression if n equals 2. Then you need to do what's called substitution. 6 take away 2. So I'm just substituting that value for the number. So if n equals 2, then 6 take away n equals 4. Now, you might also see this as a chart. So in one column is going to be our input, in the other column is going to be our output. Now, we already know if n, okay, so the input is your n. What are you putting in for that number? 
if n was 2, our output, which is the, the evaluated expression, 6 take away 2 was 4. Now, what if n is 3? Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to substitute the 3 for the n. 6 take away 3 is 3. So if I input 3, my output is also 3. What if I input 5? 6 take away 5 is 1. So if I substitute 5 for n, my input was 5, my output is 1. Now, this will look a little bit different than equations. Rather than the possibility of being given multiple um, values for t, I know that 5 multiply t equals 30, and so I'm trying to figure out what value goes in there. Now, realistically, this is something that you guys have been doing since kindergarten. 5 add box equals 8, and I need to figure out what goes inside that box. So, 6, 7, 8. 5 add 3 equals 8. The premise is exactly the same, except now, rather than a box to represent my unknown number, I'm just simply giving it a letter. 5 add q equals 8. So I now have two different equations here that require a solution. Now, I already did the 5 add box equals 8, so I know 6, 7, 8, q is equal to 3. But to solve an equation, there's two words you need to know. Opposite operation. Opposite operation. Okay? To solve an equation, to figure out what the value of that variable is, I'm going to do the opposite operation. Now, the whole idea is like a scale. If I want both sides of my scale to stay equal, whatever I'm doing on one side, I've got to do on the other. And the whole idea would be to get my variable alone, to have q by itself. But if I'm going to get q by itself, then I've got to do something about this adding of 5. So if I'm adding 5, the opposite of adding 5 would be taking away 5. So 5 take away 5 is 0, so that goes away. That gives me my variable q all on its own. I do it to one side, my scale has to stay equal. So I've got to do the same thing on the other side. 8 take away 5 tells me that q is equal to 3. So you always want to think about an equation as a scale. That equal sign tells me both sides have to be the same. I'm working to get that variable alone. And whatever I do to one side to get that variable alone, I have got to do to the other side. Now, I get that alone by doing the opposite operation. So 5 multiply t equals 30. What is the opposite of multiply? PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, md, multiply and divide. So my opposite of multiply by 5 is going to be divide by 5. Now, 5 divided by 5 is 1. Any number divided by itself equals 1. So 5 divided by 5 gives me 1. And then that 1 is multiplying t. Now 1 multiplied by a number is just that number. So really in that dividing by 5, that gets me my variable all alone. But if I'm going to keep my scale equal, if I divide one side by 5, I have got to divide the other side by 5. Now, how many times does 5 go into 30? We can skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 6. So that tells me t equals 6. Now, I can always check my work with this by doing the math. 5 multiply t was 30. Well, if I say t equals 6, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5 multiply 6 is 30. 
Therefore, my solution is correct. That's the long and the short of expressions and equations. Expressions have no equal sign. Equations do. The variable is just that letter representing an unknown number. How about we go to our apprentice question of the week? This week's apprentice question comes to us from an apprentice named Grace. Hi, Abacus. How many dolls would I have if I had three and I buy five more? Newtness overload! Okay, so the question is, how many dolls would she have if she had three and bought five more? It's just so adorable. One doll, two dolls, three dolls. There's what she had. One doll, two doll, three doll, four doll, five dolls. So we had three, and we're adding five to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Grace now has eight dolls. Thanks for that question, Grace. Cuteness overloaded. For this week's magic trick, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do a card trick. Now, for this card trick, I would normally have audience participation. Problem is, you're out there and I'm in here. So, with my Penn and Teller's perfectly ordinary deck of cards, and my good friend Siri here, She's going to help you choose a card, and we'll see how this goes. Give it a good shuffle here. Maybe one more time. Whew. They fell a little bit there. We'll give it one more just for good measure. Okay, now I'm going to have Siri help you pick your card. There are 52 cards in this deck. So I'm going to have her pick a random number between 1 and 52. Hey Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 52. A random number between 1 and 52 is 41. Okay, so I'm going to select the 41st card in this newly shuffled deck of cards. Now I'm going to try and do this all in one take. I do have a camera above, so you'll be able to see my hands as well. Now here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. All right, so there is your card. Put that on top. Now I need you to tell me where to cut the deck. Yeah, I know, this isn't really gonna work. But we're gonna pretend anyway. So we'll say cut the deck. You said stop, right? Right there. Now, I was just flipping. I don't know where this card is. It's somewhere in here. Now, I'm going to start turning the cards over. And eventually, I'm going to guess what your card is. Now, I'll bet you that the next card I turn over is your card. What do you think? What do you think? Boom. Your card? Ten of clubs? Huh? That's it for this week's episode. As always, apprentices, until next time, make sure your math is magical. Enjoy this week's episode of Abacus the Great.
If you liked what you saw, be sure to click that like button down below. If you want to keep in touch with future videos, make sure you click on subscribe. If you want to get in contact with me one of two ways, you can email me at abacusthegreat2020 at gmail.com or if you want to record your very own cuteness overload video like Grace's today, then go to flipgrid.com slash abacusthegreat. To get into that grid, you're going to use the code MATH and then get to recording. Until next time, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode.